In this video, we're going to do some quick worked examples of finding the volume of a prism. A prism is a 3D shape with a constant cross section. If we look at some examples, we could take a Toblerone box. So at the end of a Toblerone box, we have a triangle. Wherever we cut the Toblerone box, we're going to end up with a triangle. So this is an example of a prism. Wherever I cut it, we have this constant cross section. Another example might be one of the old Smarties tube. So one of the old Smarties tube was circular on the end and we ended up with a cylinder. So we had now a cylinder and it looks something like so. So this is another example of a prism. We have a constant cross section. So wherever we cut this now, we're going to end up with a circle and it would look something like that. So these are two examples of prisms. When we're talking about the volume, we're talking about the space trapped inside these solid shapes. So we're looking at the amount of space in them. Let's start off now and work out the volume of this particular prism. This is now a cuboid. All we need to do to find the volume is find the area of one of the cross sections and multiply it by the length. So what I'm going to do now is look at this part right here. We've got a rectangular cross section. So if I look at this now, I've got a three by six centimeter rectangle. Three times by six is going to give me 18. So all I'm going to do now is find the area of this rectangle. Three times by six is equal to 18. Therefore, the area of this cross section is 18 centimeters squared. To find the volume, I simply now need to multiply this by the length. The length is going to be four centimeters. So my calculation becomes now 18 times by 4. So we're going to have 18 times by 4, which is going to give me 72. And the units we use are centimetres cubed. This is a 3D shape. It's volume. So we're going to have our answer in centimetres cubed. If this was metres, we'd have metres cubed. If it's kilometres, kilometres cubed. So all I've done is taken the area of one of the cross sections in this particular case as we got a lot to choose from, and then we've gone ahead and multiplied it by the length just here, and that will give us the volume. Let's look at another example. This one here, we can see now that I've got a constant cross section. So this is another cuboid. We've got now the length of 12, we've got the width of four, the length of 12 and the width of four. So we could say that the area of the cross section here is going to be four times by 12, so 4 times by 12 is going to give me 48. So we can say that the area of this face is 48 centimetres squared. All I need to do here to find the volume is multiply it by this length right here. So this is going to give us a volume. So we're going to have now 48 times by 4. So we've got 48 times by 4. And that's going to give us 192. So we could say that our answer will be 192 centimetres cubed. The area is squared, the volume is cubed. You could, of course, work out the top part right here if you wanted to do that. We have a 4 by 4 square on the end. So the top is going to be 16 centimetres squared. And then we would multiply this now by the 12. 16 times by 12 is 192 as well. OK. What we have here is a triangular prism. So the cross section here, the constant cross section is a triangle. So wherever I cut this, we're gonna get a triangle. So if I can work out the area of this triangle here, all I need to do is multiply it by the length. And that will give me now the volume. So if we look, we've got the area of a triangle. To find the area of a triangle, I multiply the base by the height and divide by two. So the area of a triangle is going to be three, times by five divided by two. That's going to give me now that the area is going to be, now this is 15, 15 over two is 7.5. So we can say that the area of the cross section is going to be 7.5 centimeters squared. To find the volume, all I need to do now is multiply the cross section, the area of the cross section by this length of six. So we're going to do now six, times by 7.5. 6 times by 7.5 is going to give me 45 
and the units are going to be again centimeters cubed. So if this was millimeters, it would be millimeters cubed. If it was inches, it would be inches cubed. So these are some straightforward examples. We find the area of a cross section and multiply it by the length. Okay, what we have here is a composite or compound shape. So we can see now that the cross section here, the constant cross section is a little L shape or a Tetris block. What I'm going to do is find the area of this cross section. So let's go ahead and split this up. We can see now that I've got a four by eight. So what I'm going to do is write that down. The area of this rectangle here is going to be 32 centimeters squared. If we look at this one here, we've got a four and then we've got this length right here. That's going to be five. I can see that the total length here is going to be nine. This one is going to be four, so this is five. So we can say that this is a five by four, which is going to give me 20 centimeters squared. So the area of the top adding together is going to give me 52 centimeters squared. This is the area of the cross section. We've got a constant little L shape. So all we're doing is adding those together. So if I do that, we've got now a total of 52, and that's going to be, again, we're working in centimetres, centimetres squared. So to find the volume, I simply now need to multiply this by the length right here, and that length is 12. This is the constant cross section, that now is the length. So what we're going to have then is 52 times by 12, and that's going to give us 520 plus 104, which will give us now 624, and that will be centimetres cubed. So again, our dimensions are in centimetres. They're not always going to be, but all we've done is gone ahead and multiplied this up. So that gives me now the volume of this compound shape. Of course, you didn't have to split the top like that. You could have put the line across there, or you could have subtracted the cutaway part from a rectangle. It's entirely up to you. There is a video on the area of a composite or compound shape if you want to check that out. Lots of different ways. What we need though is the area of a cross section. Okay, let's look at one more. Let's look at the volume of a prism. So when we're talking about a prism, we're talking about now a circular prism. So what we have is a cylinder and it will look something like so. So what we need to do is find the area of a cross section, which is just the area of a circle, and then multiply this by the height. So let's go ahead and just draw up a cylinder. So a cylinder might look something like so. So let's put some dimensions on. Let's say we were given now that the radius was going to be five centimeters, and this height was going to be 10 centimeters. We might be asked to work out the volume of a cylinder. So if we say that this is 10 cent, in fact, we'll do meters as everything, has been, uh, everything else has been in centimeters, and this now is five meters. So what I want then is the area of a cross section. For a circle, and I'll just write this down, for a circle, the area is going to be pi r squared. So if we think about this, what we've got is the area is going to be pi multiplied by the radius squared. The radius is going to be five squared, which is 25 times by pi. So what we're going to have then is the volume is going to be now 25 pi, pi is just a number, multiplied by the 10. So all we're doing is multiplying the area. So the area of a cross section, or if you like, the end plate, and we're going to multiply this by the length. So we end up now with the volume being equal to 250 pi, and that will be cent uh, or meters in this case, meters cubed. So that's the exact answer. If we wanted to round our answer in the calculator, 250, and then we just put shift pi. Pi is about 3.14. So we get 785. So I'll say that's going to be 785 and that will be meters cubed. So the volume is going to be 785 meters cubed, and that's given to the nearest meter. So just put in here the nearest meter. So nearest meter cubed, it's going to be 785. So all we're doing is finding every cross section and multiplying it by the length.